Bienvenido mi gente a otro episodio de Tape y hoy les traigo a ustedes a... <ríe> Oye, encontré tu nombre completo. Oh, man. Cristian Alberto Mamejo. Mam usted... <ríe> <ríe> el DJ del año de la gala dominicana de 2015. Oh. El que le hace a ustedes el mezclatón a través de la X96.3 ritmo de New York. DJ Chris Mambo. Manito Negros Party, thank you, man. Gracias por tenerme aquí en tu, en tu canal, que está haciendo un trabajo fenomenal. Manito, trying to stay sane, right? Con todo that, el... yo, oh, oh, my God. Man, yo, you know, I think that's the, that's the thing about this entire corona thing, you know? Trying to stay sane and, um, and not kind of losing ourselves. Pues sí, yo, trying to stay sane with this, because, yo, this entire, you know, pandemic thing, I mean, I think... You know, we're living in a, in a, in a chapter of a history book, right? Um, where we, we never thought this. You're kind of like, man, how did that happen? You know, yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think we're kind of like in that state. Um, and um, I don't listen, it's, it's tough. But um, let's get to you, right? Um, and here on tape, uh, you know, we're trying to show the different side of the coin, right? Because todo el mundo ve el éxito. They see the success and, you know, how you got there and whatnot, right? Yeah. But, you know, I want to talk about the, the process of getting there. And, Oof. you know, and sometimes, you know, the, the things that go unseen. Um, and, and I think that's important for a lot of people to see because it allows them to, to know that it, it wasn't as easy as it, as it looked to get there, right? So let's first talk about, you know, you're an only child, correct? Um, yeah, I'm an only child. I, I had a little sister. She passed away. Okay. Uh, talk, yeah. Actually, talk to me about that. Talk to me about, you know, their experience and, you know. Wow. This is like the first time I talk about it in camera. So, um, you know, I was six, she was four, and um, we was coming out of a birthday party, un cumpleaños que de un primo mío en el parque ahí en Jersey City on Montgomery Street. I don't know if you are familiar with it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's another thing. Let me just clarify. You know, we're both from Hudson County and Hudson yeah, County yeah. kids in the building. Keep on going. Yeah. And I know you got a fan base that's from everywhere. So <laughs> I was born and raised in Jersey City. So we were coming out of the party and... Um, It, it, it's just so weird what what happened. This is why I, I believe in like spirits and like energies and all this. So um, we're walking home. We're walking away um, from the party. Y estamos esperando en la luz, el, you know, for the light to turn red so we can cross the street and, you know, keep going. So something tells me, let go of your mother, start running, warn your little sister and your mother that a car is coming. So... I start running. I don't, I look back and my mom's like, muchacho, you know, typical. Yeah, typical like, yeah. <laughs> and um, all of a sudden I look back and then I keep running and something like just picked me up and held me to the fence. And a car just came on the sidewalk and just ran over my little sister and my mother. Um, you know, my little sister, she lost her life and my mother, she just became on disability for the rest of her life. She's great, you know, she's doing very well. But um, yeah, I mean, that's, that, that, that was a crazy, crazy moment in my life. You know, losing my little sister right there in front of me when I was only six years old. Now, now how, you know, I mean, and, I mean, it's, I don't even, I, you know, I'm, I'm a bit of lost of words here, but you know, how does a, a, an incident like that, you know, impact, you know, the rest of your life? Like how, you know, How do you how how do you cope with that being such a young age? Well, I, I I've always been mature. Like I've always been a mature person. Uh, um, it really hurts, you know. It, it hurts, but um, um, I guess I always told myself these are things that happen in life that have to happen, and um, you know, la cosa pasan por algo, y y nada, estamos, estamos aquí, estamos positivos siempre y, I mean, it, it's, it's, listening to what I'm saying, the story that I'm saying, like how everything happens, it's just, you know, so unreal, like I still don't believe it till this day, I'm 35, you know, this happened when I was six years old, and, um, you know, I, like I said, I was always mature, I wasn't like those kids that I was watching cartoons, I always liked the things the adults were doing, so while everybody was watching cartoons, 
I'll watch like the Wonder Years or you know, Saved by the Bell or, or <laughs> and um, but I always had a, a a positive mind saying you know things happen for a reason and I'm gonna just keep moving forward and you know, unfortunately I lost my little sister but my mom is still alive she's she's doing great you know, y le doy gracias a Dios por eso, ¿entiende? Do you think that struggle at the same time um, inspired you to uh, reach higher? Um, of course. Of course. Son cosas que uno dice, you know what? Esto me pasó, pero yo sé que yo tengo un propósito en esta vida because I was on the other side of my mother. She was holding my hand and the other side was my little sister. The car was going to hit th all three of us. ¿Entiende? Yeah. And something just told me run the car's coming you know you're six years old like you look you look back and there's no damn car and all of a sudden a car comes on top of the sidewalk uh he was drunk it was like 5 p.m in the afternoon wow and um so these things you know i i said well you know and i haven't found it yet it's probably not you know what i'm doing now Probably later in the future, I, I would find that, you know, I, I would find out why, why I'm still here, you know? Well, um, I definitely wasn't expecting to start, uh, to start <laughs> that deep. Um, you know, I think this is the first time I actually, you know, speak about this, speak about it. Yeah. Why, 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 why haven't you spoken about this before? Um, well, I have in the past, but not like on camera or, you know, on, on, on the radio or anything like that. I guess, you know, it, 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 it's something that's hard to talk about, you know, especially when you're that little and then you, you, st you grow up and you still have that inside you, you know? Now, you know, you know, you know growing up in Jersey City, in Hudson County, yeah. right? I, I grew up in Western Europe for a good portion. Um, and, you know, I, I know that um, the livelihood in these areas um, are sometimes not the best, um, but there's a but lot of great but sometimes they're not the, there's a lot of great experiences as well. Right. So I want you to talk to me about, you know, you know, you know, going to Ferris high. Um, and, oh man, uh, you really did your research, bro. But money, Right. You know, like, you know, and you know, what connections were made there, you know, what, what memories were made there that, you know, kind of like molded, you know, you know, who is Chris Mambo today? Um, well, in Jersey City, I, I grew up in the projects, you know, um, my mom, like I said, she um, became uh, disabled, like on disability, so we, she couldn't work, so we, we had to live in the projects, and um, nah, I mean, it just made me stronger, like, to get away from all that, you know, and, and, and start something that is going to take me to another level, a uh, uh, career when I went to Ferris I was playing baseball uh, I actually got into NJCU because of baseball Dure dos años en el equipo and then you know you you're a baseball coach yourself and you know how it is it's really tough to get into the even to um, you know single A yeah. you know what I mean so if you're not being scouted by your senior year in high school or maybe your freshman year in, in college, you know, it's, it's not that you're wasting your time, but it's, it's tough. So, um, a lot of great memories with the guys, you know, with the, with the team, um, a lot of great memories with the people I went to school with and I still see a lot of them and a lot of them are, you know, professionals. And I'm very happy because like you said, Jersey city is tough to grow and grow up in Jersey city. A lot of people say, ah, oh, he's from Jersey city. But a lot of people, a lot of famous people came from Jersey City, you know, from New Jersey, from Newark, from, you know, our area, Hudson County. You know, I know, and when I was growing up in West New York, you know, the, there mm. was the struggle of, you know, falling into gangs, um, the uses of drugs. Um, and, you know, I think Jersey City, I mean, I mean everything around that time would be most the same, right? Yeah. So, you know, how, how, did you, how did you keep your head out of that when, you know, Especially, you know, when your, your, your mother's disabled, you're living in the projects where mm -hmm. most of these activities are happening. You know, how did, how did you stay away from that? How did you uh, keep your head in the, in the right place? Everything I do, I think about my mother. So if I'm going to do something, I'm going to 
ask myself, would your mom like that? How would your mom feel if you got arrested for selling drugs? And like I said, ever since I was little, I was always mature. I, I knew what was right from wrong. And yeah, I had friends and I knew what friends to choose. Entiende? So, all right, cool. So now um, we're going to play a little game, right? Um, okay. it's, it's, <laughs> it's play, pause, and mute, right? I'm going to give you three artists and you have to pick which one you're going to press play on, which one you're going to play pause on, and which one you're going to mute. <laughs> okay. All right? And you're going to explain to me why you're picking this. Okay. It's not that easy, though. <laughs> All right. Omega Sujeto Alahasa. Wow. I mean, I, I like all three of them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is not that easy. Um, I'm going to say, wow. Omega Play. You said choose, right? Sujeto. Yeah. So now, now you have so now you have pause and mute. So you have to put sujeto o mm -hmm. on on pause, and then you gotta mute the other one. <laughs> I'm gonna mute um sujeto and you know. You gonna mute sujeto? <laughs> no, no, I'm gonna pause sujeto. I'm sorry, and I'm gonna, oh, gonna yeah, I'm gonna mute um All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, cool. So like yo crecí con Omega y el sujeto, you know, but alahasa, you know, he's he's great, you know. Exa exactly, exactly. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, now, now, you know, where did the spark of uh, wanting to become a DJ come from? Where did, uh, where did that, you know, who, who, told, who, who told Christian, like, hey, listen, you know, you should try being a DJ or, you know, what did you see that was like, oh, you know what, I might want to do that? Um, well, I always liked sports. But then when I was younger, I, I used to always listen to the radio and uh, Funk Flex was on at 7 o'clock at night one time and I hear this, go flex, go flex. Go flex. <laughs> and then I had like this Walkman where I can record stuff and I just kept recording and recording and listening back. And then I'm like, yo, I want to do that. That sounds cool. All those elements and the music and the way, you know, he, he was always controversial. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and then I, uh, I went to college. Um, my baseball teammate, we become DJs. You know, because we started liking, you know, the music. We start going out to the clubs with the fake IDs and stuff like that. Oof. And, um, yeah, yeah. Back then, back in the day when I was growing up, it was still easy to get a fake ID, and it wasn't even the license that you had to show. I got it on Lafayette Street in Chinatown. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, and I'm like, yo, we gotta, we gotta do this. And then, um, that's where Mambo came. The the name Mambo. And he was um, swing, so it was Mambo swing because we loved Tipico at that time. Remember when Tipico, Merengue Tipico got popular? Everybody was like listening to. Was, was that Epps Prime? Yeah, like, uh, you know, Giovanni Polanco, he's a Mambo swing. So I was like, Mambo y, y, y El Fido, el amigo mío, who's now a pastor, incredible. And um, he became DJ Swing. I kept going with it. Um, I'm, in still, I'm still in college. I'm actually getting paid, you know working in radio, getting paid while going to college, which is really tough to do. Okay, so wait, wait, what, which radio were you on at that time? Well, when I started, I was working with um, Mike Kellerman, Stephen A. Smith, um, all those guys um, at ESPN. That's where I started. Wow. Yeah. And I didn't want to do that because my thing was always the commercial radio with the, with the, you know, the Spanish music and, you know, I want to be on the Latin side. But to, let me tell you, it was probably the best place I work and I gained the most experience because obviously I was not on the air, you know, yeah, I like sports, but I couldn't, I can't talk sports. You know, I forget names really quick. My memory is really like, I don't know. E, but I learned so much. I learned everything. I was in the background. I don't know if you ever listened to ESPN where they're like, Oh, so um, Robert Kane said this. And then they put it like a, a audio clip. Yeah. So those audio clips, I was doing that. I was recording that for the guys, setting that up for the different shows. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. The way, you know, they would express themselves. Like, it's, it's cool to listen to them on the radio, but it's even cooler to be there. You know, when Stephen A. Smith is on his rant. You know? <laughs> and um, it, it was an amazing experience there, from there. 
I um, started working at SBS. Uh, I actually emailed Carolina Cadillo, who was working in the morning show back then. And this was, you know, when Luis got to La X and all that. So I was working with the morning show on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I sent her an email and I said, hey, Carolina, because she would always be on the air like, you know, and she'll give out the email because, you know, the guys will always like yeah. criticize how, how her looks. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to email her and tell her, listen, I'm, look, I'm working at ESPN, but I want to go into the Spanish market. I want to work in, you know. So she responded in five minutes. I was like, whoa. So th she's amazing, Carolina Cadillo. I love her. I, this right now, what I'm doing, I owe it to her. And a lot of other people, Belinda, Ivelisse, you know, Hando El Sorro, I know you know him. Yeah. And um, she said, yeah, come in. I met the guys. I met, you know, the crew. And I just started working there. My first gig with them was the Puerto Rican parade. I get on the float. And Ivelisse is like, you know, she used to work promotions. She's like, who are you? What are you doing? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm the new guy, you know, I'm here yeah, in promotion. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> like, the new guy. I'm the new guy. All right, get off the flow and here's the, you know, flyers. And I had to walk that parade. It was hot. You know how it gets. <laughs> yeah, know? for sure. Uh, but yeah, that, that then from there, I actually started working in Long Island. And una emisora llamada La Nueva Fiesta 98.5. Amazing. Esa fue mi escuelita. Uh, uh, that's where I learned to be on air. You know, the, the basic stuff. Then um, two years later, I put my demo and, you know, all is history. July now, cumplo nueve años en Univision. Nine years at Univision. Yeah, man. That Been is through wild. a lot. You know, and, you know, with this, you know, with such a long time in this game, right? Oof. Um, I'm pretty sure that there's been some highs and there also has been some lows. Oof. So, you know, wh what has been your biggest struggle, um, you know, being a DJ? Biggest struggle? Biggest struggle. I guess the new guys. That why, why is that? The new guys. Because um, now to be on the radio, I, I guess, hey, you know, I got so many followers on Instagram. Oh, this guy's hot. We got to bring him in. You know, and it's, it doesn't work like that. And, 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 and not that I've been upset. But I'm like, damn, you know, I've been working this. I've been, you know, working sometimes for free, a lot of times for free, you know, doing events for free, you know, working for clients for free. And those are the things you have to do before, you know, you go to the spotlight, you get the spotlight. And um, some of these guys are like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I know all these people. I'm in the club every like, you know, six days a week, but they're charging like $150, $200 a night. I'm, I'm not going to do that, you know, not, not because I'm like, oh, yeah, whatever. Like, you know, I'm big shot, but you're in the club and you know that it's tough, you know, to be seven days a week like these kids are doing it. And, hey, okay, they're making their name. That's cool. But that's been my biggest struggle because a lot of, I, I, a lot of these kids got a lot of the opportunities before me, but, you know, they, they didn't last. Because, obviously, to be on the radio, you have to have cojones, bro. <laughs> Yo, now, now you know. Do you one market? Do you do you think um, the process of uh, becoming an, a talent on radio has been diminishing throughout the years? Yeah, yeah, man. The thing is that is what I'm saying. Social media has changed everything, man. Before. Even myself, I couldn't be on the radio. You know, if you listen to these guys on the radio, you know, Boy from Bonao, you know, all these other guys, these guys were really it, man. Like Coco Cabrera, you know, you, you had to be at that level. Now, when you listen to radio, even on, you know, the Anglo side, you hear a lot of rookies. Yeah, they, they, they have the talent, but wow, it's... It's, it's easier now to just get in, you know? Like, oh, if you know somebody, they like you or whatever, you're, you're, you're in, you know? Now, what, what, makes, what makes a good on-air talent? What makes a good on-air talent? Yeah. Personality, bro. You have to have personality. Tienes que enganchar con la gente, con la persona que te está escuchando. 
Si tú no engancha con la gente, if you're just on the air saying the name of the song and the name of the station every, I don't know, five minutes or whatever, every record, or quita maluma, and like, you know, if you're not saying something that's going to catch their attention, you know, then it's not going to work. Yeah, you're going to be there as a filler all the time, which was my case, believe it or not. I mean, when I started, when everybody starts, it's the same thing. It's the same BS, you know, like, oh, like, el fin de semana. You know, I, I, I even came up with a name, you know, like an, un apodo. El Johnny Bravo de la radio was like. The, <laughs> That's but, a good one, though. That's a good one, though. But the attention, and, and, and believe it or not, a lot of people who hit me up, they be like, hey, Dimono Jody Bravo. I'm like, what the fuck? I haven't even used that name in like years, you know? Like, but it's good because, you know, it, it, it stayed there. Because I used to say, oh, no, soy grande arriba y chiquito abajo como Johnny Bravo, pero de la pierna, you know what I mean? Like, so those things. But like, like what really helped me was um, they put me to fill in the morning show, you know, after they get rid of the, the morning show that we had. And um, they put me there. I'm there three months mixing, no talking, just music, 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 music. I wasn't even doing traffic. We were using Shirley Ponce, who was working in Univision 41 Al Despertar at that time. She would call me or I'll call her. I'd be like, Shirley, it's my traffic report. Let's go. Let's, you know, and we'll do it like that. But then after three months, I, I told the PD, I'm like, let me talk. Let me just say something, you know, and then... Um, it started growing, you know, and then I was giving content on the air because, you know, you know how a morning show works, bro. Yes, bro. Uh, and I'm by myself. So I'm like here, you know, talking about like what things that, it, that are happening in the city or whatever and going right to the music. So it helped me develop, you know, the content and the music and putting everything together and the traffic report, you know, it, 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 that, that, that really helped me, you know. And if you don't have those things on the air, like where, where like I said, that you, you don't catch the attention to the, to the audience, then it's going to be tough for you. It's going to be a tough road, you know, and I'm still learning it. You know, I'm not saying that I'm, you know, or whatever. I'm still learning it, but yeah, I got the experience because I was, what, in three different morning shows? All right, perfect. Now, here's another game. Um, oh, if, you thought, if, you thought, if you thought the last one was hard, <laughs> this one, this one, this one's going to be hard. It's called The Last Dance, right? The Dance. Wow. Last dance. So you have a last dance. You get to pick the genre and who you're dancing it with. Whoa. All right. Well, yo soy un tigre que no baila. I don't know. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> tú, 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 tú <laughs> like, my favorite genre is salsa. And, uh, you know, and I don't know how to dance it. Oh, God. <laughs> So Just, why not? Wait, tell me. So wait, it's your favorite genre. So why don't you know how to dance it? I don't know, man. And you know what? I'm very shy, man. You know, shy. It, it, how how is Chris Mambo shy? Es, you go. You said it, Chris Mambo. And does Chris Mambo al aire un desgraciado, un mujeriego, un borrachón, le gusta la vaina? And then Christian, <laughs> Chris, you know, in his house all the time. The last time I drank because you know I'm so shy. Even when I DJ at the club. I got to tell, uh, you know, Pachi, the, the, uh, you know, the, the person who yeah. met me, uh, I got to tell Pachi, get, get, get me a drink, bro, bef you know, before I get on this mic. You know, I, I see the crowd and I start getting sweaty. I, I sweat a lot. And <laughs> it's mambo. It's like a, la cabina. There's nobody there. A veces cuando llega el jefe, I'm like, oh, fuck. I was just going to do a freaking break and this guy's here. And, um... <laughs> <laughs> Mambo, un desgraciado, un mujeriego, encanta la mujer ajena, la mujer gorda. Entonces, Christian is just like, you know, he's in his house. The last time I drank, like I said, was in the club. Like, when was the last club? What, in freaking January, February? I don't, I don't remember. Damn. Entonces, that's why I don't dance, man. I, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I, don't know. I get shy. I, I get red right away. I don't like the attention. You know what I mean? I do, I do the radio because I have a passion for it. It, it just grew. Like, I... I like, every day I go in, I'm like, damn, I freaking love this shit. You know, like, it, it, it's a drug, you know? Yes, yeah, I completely the, understand it. Cuando ya apago ese micrófono que se lo entrego a Coco a la tres, get out through the door and Chris Ma Christian is just quiet, you know. Me invitan a un barbecue, soy el que está ahí sentado, I don't say nothing. 
And, and, and a lot of people think, oh, my man, the people say, come mierda. It's not that. It's just, you know, I'm shy. But when you start talking to me, you know, yo me desarrollo y comienzo a hablar. And then people be like, yo, loco, callate la boca, manín. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, if I had to choose a genre, then I would choose bachata because I do know how to dance bachata. Uh, the song? No, oh, okay, put the song. You added that, but I'll, I'll take it though. Uh, Amiga Veneno. Oof, oof, oof. Favorite bachata. I think that's like the best bachata ever. That's a good one. I always say it on the air. El día que yo haga la mora, eh, el amor, escuchando esta bachata, esa mujer queda embarazada. <laughs> eh, <laughs> Amiga Veneno, Zacarías Ferreira. Oh man, I, I I don't I don't know. Like, does it have to be like a celebrity or uh, I don't know? I mean, whoever you want, whoever you want. Let's let's, let's I'm, I'm gonna put it easy for you. Let's go celebrity. Celebrity. You know, I don't really like celebrities like that. Like, you know how people go crazy? Like, ah, oh, Jennifer Lopez. She's like, no, I'm like, oh. eh, Mandy Moore. That's like the only celebrity crush I I like. Mandy Moore. You know, so look, I'll tell you one thing, right? So I suck with names and I super, super duper suck with like artists and like putting their names together. So who's well, Mandy Moore? Mandy Moore, uh, she's a singer. She's also an actress. Y ella hizo una película, one of my favorite movies. I love the romantic movies. Si tu Christian is being romantic. Romantico. Remember, you ever watch that movie? A Walk to Remember? Yeah, a Walk to yeah. Remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, walk to oh, that girl? Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. cute. Either her or Anna Konnikova, okay? It's always been my crush since I was little. The tennis player, Enrique Iglesias' um, wife? Uh, or her nope. girlfriend? No, ni idea quién es. Anna Konnikova. You don't know Anna? All right. Well, oh, yeah. Yo te acabo de decir que eso que te... All right. So, you know... Fefita la Grande. You know that one? Esa yo la conozco. Esa yo la conozco. Esa yo la conozco. Bueno, con Fefita la Grande. There you go. All right. So, you know... Oh, man. You spoke about baseball. You spoke about... Yeah. um. Uh, going to NJCU. Um, yeah. Talk to me, because, you know, as a coach, you know, I think um, the development of a player um, usually tends to a lot of the success in their life, right? So talk to me how baseball kind of impacted you in becoming who you are today. Well, it kept me away from the streets, you know, like even even though I, I like I said before, I was very mature since I was young. It just kept me away from the street doing something positive and like um, setting goals for myself because eventually I wanted to become a, a major league baseball player. You know, they used to call me C-Rod. I was so obsessed with freaking Alex Rodriguez. Así mismo como tú encontraste la biografía mía, el nombre completo. I can tell you a lot of things about Alex that a lot of people don't know. You know, his birthday is now coming up on July 27th. You know, like, I love the guy. But, um, yeah, it just kept me away from the streets, and it kept me, you know, I, I failed at it. Obviously, I'm not a baseball player. and uh, But you know what? It, it motivated, motivated me to do something else. I, you know, if baseball didn't work, I'm going to keep doing something positive until I find something that, that's going to work for me. And so far, this is working for me. I ain't más o menos, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, now, you know, I think, you know, as baseball players, we, we become very uh, passionate about yeah. players, players who we like, right? So, you know, I'm, I'm a Derek Jeter fan. And okay, awesome. Derek, Derek Jeter is, the, is my guy. There's no questions asked. One of the so, best players ever. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, so there's always a bait, right? People bring up players and they compare them to. So now we got another game, right? Oh, man. And I, and I, just, I just feel like these games are just going to get harder for you, by the way. <laughs> right? All right? So this game is play. Bench and cut. Okay. Okay. Right? You're going to play this player at third. You're going to bench this guy from third. And you're going to cut this guy from the team. Okay, dale. Here's your three players. Adrian Beltre. I'm going to... Well, uh, the guys. Alex Rodriguez. Oh, he's going to play. <laughs> he's going to play. Miguel Cabrera. Oof. Bro. <laughs> Adrian Beltre, he's about to be a Hall of Famer, right? Yep. Oh. And then you talk, and then you're talking about McGregor Cabrera, who who just won the last person to win the triple crown. So you know, I mean, I like think... one of the best hitters to ever play the game. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, man. No, no, that's. You know what? I'm gonna cut Alex Rodriguez and, and <laughs> pay Adrian Beltre, and you know, I'm gonna bench. <laughs> and you you gonna you Miguel? You gonna bench Miguel? You know what? He's still playing. You know, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta play the the Hall of Famer. All right, perfect. Okay, 
So now, you know, let's talk about, you know, the your kind of your track record on 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 these uh on these shows on you know, you were part of El um El El, el Manicomio. Um, yep. You worked with uh Luis Jimenez. Yep. Um you worked La Mañana de la X96.3 and before all of that, you also had a show where it was just by yourself. Yeah. Um you know, let's first talk about that show that it was just by yourself. How 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 was that? How did you how did you manage Well, being on a show so early one by yourself and then because to me like i think you know i just recently started like yeah. doing podcasting by myself and i noticed how difficult it is Hard. to carry out you <laughs> yeah. know a a long segment of time on content and conversation yeah, yeah by yeah. yourself right so you know how, how was that experience <sighs> well i didn't really have the pressure because um i knew that another morning show was gonna come but um it was tough man because you know when you're on the radio you have things like liners things that you have to say then um if you're lucky you get a, a sponsorship you get a, a client and you have to do the live reads uh, in the morning you have to do the traffic i was mixing so it's like sometimes i'll put us play a song and start getting ready for something else and i'm like looking at my computer like oh shoot the song is about to finish and quick find something and put it you know and um getting the traffic report sometimes the uh the internet wouldn't work and i'm like sweating in the studio like oh my god what do i do now like you know things like that but um it it, it was tough man because all morning shows they have a complete team at least minimum seven people yes what minimum okay. now now you know you go from that and you go to el manicomio now let me just make sure that i got everybody who was here um nani sanchez el primo king platano paul easy and yan right yeah we also had cacho who was the producer and marlene who también estaba assistant producer now how was that how was el manicomio el manicomio was a uh was fun man it, it it had potential and you know como todo it, you know just had to perform entiende and it's it's tough when you put a whole group together that's new in the market and for people to you know we had a great audience like we had a fan base in the first month it was like amazing like the people would call we'd be like oh shit there's a lot of people calling you know and uh it, it was great but You know, some cosas que pasan that, you know, I can't really talk about it. But um, to me, the show had a lot of potential. It was fun. It, 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 you know, there was a lot of people like myself who were, you know, rookies and doing morning shows. But, you know, you had Young Ruiz and you had Paul Easy who come from doing those type of shows. And um, I guess not being from New York, that being un poquito difícil, you know. Okay. You know now, how. now, now, now. Do, do you think you know? Uh, you know, a morning show can have the 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 I guess the correct talent and still not succeed. Of course, man. It happens all the time. It happens all the time, and it happens in the Anglo side, bro. I mean, I'm not gonna talk the numbers, like like what's going on in the Anglo, like who's winning, who's not. But you know, but it, it happens, man. It happens. All right, so now Luis Jimenez, right? Luis Jimenez is definitely one of those. Um, it's the Howard, uh, bro. To me, he's like he, the best talent, Spanish talent. There's no guy like him, and I'm not so, even this is you know kiss butt. Kiss now, butt. now here's how how was working with him? How was how was that? Amazing, bro. He's a beautiful guy. Amazing, amazing, amazing. I mean, before you before you keep on going, right? So, and the reason why I bring up this question, right? Because you know, um, from what I've heard, right. He has a very uh, kind of like a dictatorship uh, way that he runs his show. He runs like, this is the way that I run and this is the way that, you know, that, uh, is, that, that we're going to succeed. So I bring you this question is to like, you know, were there any difficulties working with someone who's so successful and is so good at what they do, but, you know, maybe has a certain way of working? Well, you have to be like that to be successful, bro. But um, conmigo, yo no vi ese lado de él. And one of the, uno de los detalles is que él estaba en un estudio y yo estaba en la cabina de la X. So we were like, you know, get the signal, the feed from, from the studio. So whatever was going on during the commercials, I, I, I don't know. And, I, I, and his team, like, you know, I, I never heard anything negative about, about, you know, working with him, you know? Entiende? Yeah. Now, you know, you know being, being part of something of, of 
that magnitude like, and you calling him the the what's the name? I forgot his name. Howard Howard the the king uh, the king of all media Howard Stern the, the Howard Stern Howard Stern yeah. right um and and he has, he always uses this line the the radio, that radio is the the mind of the theater right yeah uh, or the theater with theater of the mind of the mind yeah the theater of the mind the theater of the mind right mm -hmm. um do you do you think that you know his his success also has to do with the I guess the the I guess you know, from all the on-air talents that I've, you know, I've bumped into, mm -hmm. I feel like he's, um, he's ha he has a, a I, I almost want to say a different type of passion for radio. Like, there's people who like to be on-air personality. There's people yeah, who, no. you know what I mean? But I feel like he, like, loves, like, the concept of radio. You see where I'm getting at? Yeah, no, he, and, you know, I, I, I all the interviews that they, you know, when they interview Luis, I, I watch them all. And, you know, one of the things that he... He has his passion for radio, and it's. It, I think it, he he said it was when he was seven years old. That's when he started, you know, loving it. And he had a little brother who was sick. He talks about it, and and a lot of the interviews. And he used to talk to him, you know, like make him believe he was on the radio and all that stuff. I I, I don't know the exact story because you know I, I you know I, I'm not gonna talk about you know yeah yeah for sure. But yeah, the guy has a passion for radio. He knows radio. And um, the reason why I, I like Luis is because I am a Howard Stern number, like hardcore Howard Stern fan. And um, the fact that Luis actually beat him while working in that morning show and Howard Stern's like, yo, who's this guy that's beating us right now in the ratings? And, you know, he got to meet Howard Stern and he's like so all, all nervous and stuff like that. You know, that that... <laughs> That, that that's an amazing story like when you can accomplish something like that in radio i think you you're set you know like you're listen like, to me i think you know one of the one of the things that i've always said you know once um once you become competition to your idols that's when you know you're oh successful. man you know what yeah I mean? and, and i think to and the fact that you know howard actually took the time to be like yo i want to know who this is and i want to go yeah. meet him i think that also shows character to the person who who you well, look up to Howard's like that because that guy does not like to lose to anyone. Oh, me. I mean, I don't like losing either. So I, I totally understand where he's coming from. Right? Even with the guys that he used to work within the station. Like, he's like, okay, if this guy's not, you know, getting the, the better numbers, you know, I, I'm going to quit or I'm going to go over there. I miss in the morning when he was working at um, NBC. And, you know, he, I think, um, you know, they, they would compete. Like, you know, Howard was doing the afternoon. And they will compete with the numbers, like who got the better numbers, either Imes or him. You know, it's crazy, bro. Like, it, but I love that stuff. Y esas son las cosas que ya no se ven en la radio. Entiende? All that fun stuff, all those, you know, things that used to happen in, in the morning shows, you know, cuando iban a la calle, el mismo boca chula que se quitaba la camisa y se iba en un pantaloncito corto with a little hooter shirt, like up to here. Yeah. Those things, like, they, they, they're gone, bro. Like a lot of a lot of things have changed. You know, after 9-11, everything changed, man. And social media también cambió todo. Now, um, talk to me about la mañana de la X, because you know that was uh that was after Luis in Venice, right? So yeah, you know, that, how, that, was, how was that experience? Um, it was great, man, because now I was hosting, I was like the main guy with Nani or Nani, well, I don't know. It was just we were both there, you know. And it was fun because we were, like, interacting. People actually liked it. You know, people still talk about it. Like, hey, man, I miss you guys. You and Nani, you know. And um, it, it was fun. It was a different, you know, that's when I started learning how to communicate with somebody else, you know, because it was always by myself. And then in El Manicomio, I was the DJ. I would come in. I would do some, you know, like, chatter here. Here and there. But I wasn't, like, the main, you know. And, um... In the morning with not la, la mañana con de la X con Nani, it was just fun. You know, we, we would have to find, uh, encontrar contenido, start fighting. Not, not fighting, but, you know. The say, arguments, the presentation of it. Something, you know, estupido. Que la gente, Spicy. Like, what the hell are these two doing? You know, like, it was fun. It was fun, man. It, 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 like I said, that, that, that helped me develop my character and um, being an on-air personality. You know, that, that's the difference between... Okay, yo soy un DJ de la X o yo soy una personalidad de, de la X, entiendo, un talento de la X. Okay. It's, 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 it's a different. Now, 
let's say la mañana like right because la mañana x then you go um and you kind of just there's i think you what, what happens after that <clears throat> before you get where you are today la mañana de la x i don't know i start doing a whole bunch of things bro right I so, start. <laughs> so here's my thing right did, did you feel at a certain point where it was kind of like you know i i kind of you know covered and i and i did this show for you know an x amount of time mm -hmm. and then i just kind of went to you know being being a floater where i was just kind of covering everything I became a floater that's exactly what it was you know I, yo dure cuatro años eh, levantándome a la 3:45 de la mañana and then when they just put me as a floater it's tough bro because waking up at 3:45 in the morning it is not easy my brother it is not easy I can only imagine. You know, like you, you, you. When I, when you finish at ten o'clock, you know, you just want to go to sleep. You wake up at one. You eat. You go back to sleep. Wake up like at seven p.m. You eat again. Mind you, you, you start eating at four o'clock in the morning. After you know, you take a shower and all that, and you know, go to the station. Then you start eating at six o'clock in the morning when they bring breakfast or whatever. And then you eat at ten. Then you get home. Then you're like all tight, bro. I was. I got really, really. I'm. You know, I'm still fat. Like I'm chubby. But I got really big, you know, doing that that morning stuff. And I thought about all that. I'm like, damn, I I, I sacrificed como quien dice my life. Health, yeah. Eating habits were bad. Um, my sleeping patterns were horrible. I would be grumpy sometimes on the weekend because I'm so tired, you know. Ya llega el domingo a las seis de la tarde. I would have to leave a barbecue or whatever it is to go home and just relax, you know, for the next day. And um, you know, it it. it it was tough. Then I become a floater, you know, but uh, I never gave up. There was a, there was some points that I was like, you know what, maybe I should just give this up, you know, like, but I never, I, I never, I just kept going, kept focused. Uh, I think I started doing El Tapón de la Cinco. I don't, I don't even remember what the hell I did after um, La Mañana con De La X. I just felt like, I, I just felt like I saw you everywhere. Oh, I think they put me three to seven, right? Before El Palo con Coco. Yeah, three to seven for a while. Yeah, um, like for like a month and a half or something like then, that. And then, and then El Palo came through. And then um, the following year, because it was towards the end of the year, I go seven to midnight. There you yeah. go. And now I'm doing the 10 to three, which is... <laughs> yeah. now, 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 now let's talk about that. Let's talk about El Mercatón con Chris Mambo. Yeah. Um, is, you know... Is is this what success looks like for Chris Mambo? Um, no. <laughs> why? Wh why not? Um, right now, like, you know, let, let, let's compare this to sports. I always compare what I what I do with sports. So right now, I'm on the field. You know, I'm on the field with the nine guys. You know, playing the game. You know, team player. Ba 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 bam boom. And you know when the the player retires, he either becomes a coach or he goes home and sits down with his family. You know. Correct at the money but um he either becomes a coach or buys the team like Derek Jeter what he did with um I think Tampa Marlins the Marlins there you go and um when I get to that level where I can become like a GM to a radio station because I I, I think I want to stay in the environment I, I I love it you know I love it so much so when it's my time to get off cut the mic and say you know what I'll just become the coach or you know one of the big bosses that that that's my ultimate goal you know that's where you want to be so that's what you're going to call success so when you're able to kind of just i guess manage or open possibly own your own radio station that would be the the i guess the, the in peak. that part yeah in that yeah. peak all yeah. right now you know uh to close off right um and then we got one more game um oh man all right uh you know what's the pros and cons of of waiting your turn the pros and cons. You know, the, 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 the pros uh, and cons. Because, I, I mean, you know, I think I'm a, I'm a big believer on the process, right? I yeah, mean, yeah. And, but it has but to at, be like that. But at the same time, right, I think because – and I also think I'm in, you know, I'm in the middle age, right? Because, you know, I, I grew up with their older heads where they, they are the ones that really preach, like, the process. This is how I go, blah, blah, blah. That's but, I'm a, but I'm also close to the younger heads where it's kind of like, nah, like, if we have the work ethic and we have – the papers that show it, we deserve yeah. to to get the opportunity, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I'm always caught up in between, and I think it's probably one of my biggest struggles. Yeah. Um, so I'm asking you, you know, what's what are the pros and cons of you know, kind of saying like, you know, what I just have to wait my turn. 
Well, the cons in radio, it's never. Como se dice? It's, como se dice? It's never secure. You know, it's never like written in stone. Like you're gonna get there because you work so hard because you spend four hours. I mean, four hours, four four years waking up at three forty five in the morning and getting fat or whatever your eating habits, sleeping habits. You know, they change. There's no, there's nothing secure. Puede venir un programador nuevo builds the station around a whole new team. You know, it's, it's, those are the cons, but the pros is that um, if you do, if you do it right, you know, you have the discipline. Lo primero que tener disciplina, okay? Like you don't, you know, just because I think I'm the one with the least followers on Instagram out of everybody on air, but I get the most reaction. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Um, kind of explain them furthermore. Not that I'm monitoring the other guys, pero por ejemplo, yo pongo una foto mía and I get a lot of reaction from the people. Y, y eso viene porque yo estoy en el aire y me estoy conectando con ellos, ¿entiendes? Ellos se identifican conmigo con la cosa que yo digo al aire. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I said, um, tú sabes lo bueno de tener una, una novia que tenga marido, que mañana él paga la renta. O sea, el día primero. <laughs> Don't say, you know, like people start DMing me like, yo, tú estás loco. Like, yo, but it's true. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. so that's the great part of having a girlfriend who has a husband, you know, and every first of the month he pays the rent, but tú te la goza. Entonces, esas son las cosas que, you know, I don't know if you look at my, my, um, my stories, like people just start posting me every, every single day and I repost them. And, you know, so, so the pros of, doing radio the right way, like the OGs, like, you know, the ones that are, you know, you grew up listening to is if you do it the right way, you can become successful, but you have to have a lot of discipline and you got to know that it's going to be a lot of failure. You know, in every radio station, there's always a lot of stress, you know, and always comes from the higher ups because they want to see like results, you know, like they want to see, even though the station is doing so good with revenue, they still they want more numbers and they want more, you know, but that's, that's everywhere. That's every job. All right. So listen, Chris, um, this is the end. Um, this is oh. called, uh, <laughs> this is the last game before we get out of here. Okay. Um, please bear with me. Um, I'm just here to ask these questions because I know the la gente, el público, quiere saber eh, estas, estas preguntas, right? I, all right. So uh, when I ask you these questions, you could. Keep Are you this. asking Christian or Chris Mambo? Para yo prepararme. Uh, okay, so let's. I'm, I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with Chris Mambo. Because Chris Mambo parece que más spicy, <laughs> right? Maldito. Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> exactly. So so um, let me see. Okay, yeah. So this is called El Minuto Picante, right? Picante, okay. El minuto picante. <laughs> so, de, de candela. All right, so I'm gonna ask you some spicy questions. Okay. You, you give me an answer. You could be quick about it, but you know, at the end of the day, you could, the point is to answer as many questions as possible. Porque la mujer quiere saber algo de Chris Mambo, right? Are you ready? I'm ready. Dale, dale. Se, se, seguro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. ¿Cuál parte del cuerpo te gusta más? Eh, los ojos. Eh, but wait, wait, mine or the girl? The girl. Eh, her smile. Eh, ¿Crees que tú eres bueno besando? Yeah, that's my favorite thing. Yep, hell yeah. ¿Dónde te gusta que te agarren las mujeres? Que me agarren. <laughs> <laughs> ¿Cuántos años tenía cuando perdiste la virginidad? Oh, man, I was uh, 18, yeah. <laughs> ¿Lugar más raro donde hayas tenido sexo? On top of my mom's car on one and nine after Coco Wongos. <laughs> <El yo>. eh. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, trucks. <laughs> right. ¿Dónde te encantaría tener sexo? Whoa, I mean, <laughs> I was gonna say, <laughs> but I did that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> <Peace. laughs> right. ¿Qué te prende instantáneamente? Eh, que respiren. <laughs> <laughs> ¿Cuál artista piensas que sería una fiera en la cama? Uf. Nati Natasha. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, mi gente, listen up. Uh, Chris Mambo's the like, you know, in the New York. Once again, thank you for being here with us, uh, sharing this. And, and one, 
once again, you know, I, like I told you before, you know, I think the, the good thing about, you know, what I'm trying to do here is that, you know, I'm trying to show the, that face and that yeah. story that um, a lot of people don't get to see, right? Because um, we get to see Chris Mumble. Yeah. Uh, you know, a través de la equipo, we don't know much about Chris. This email, unless I post a picture, but you get to but, hear <laughs> Exactly. But, you know, we, we get to know the personality. You know, we build a connection right. with the personality. But, you know, we don't always, you know, know the history behind them. And that's yeah. not... That's what I'm trying to do here. And, with and with radio people, it's tough because, you know, como yo te digo, Chris Mambo is a personality que cuando llega el estudio, prende ese micrófono, es like una fiera, ¿entiendes? And then when he shuts off the microphone, he's just like, you know, I mean. It's a different guy. Let me go watch something on YouTube and learn something, you know, like. And, but a lot of the, the radio people are like that, man. Bueno, once again, Chris Mambo, thank you very much. Thank you, brother. Thank you for having me. This was actually fun, man. <laughs> stop, 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 stop. <laughs> uh, no, no, an amazing job. Keep going. And that's, 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 that's what's going to make you, you know, get there and do something different. Because, you know, a lot of people are doing the same thing and copying each other, but you're doing something great and amazing. And thank you, bro. I had, a, I, I had fun, you know? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Marito. Gracias, yo. Cata el crimambo.